Hi there. I'm John Crone, the Chief Data Scientist at the machine learning company Untapped, and I'm delighted to be bringing to life today the concept of the Central Limit Theorem, one of the most important fundamental concepts in statistics. The Central Limit Theorem lies behind all of the most popular statistical and machine learning approaches of our time. First, we'll play around with a hands-on interactive Python demo to understand exactly what the Central Limit Theorem is. At the end of the demo, we'll be well positioned to grasp why it's such a critical concept across statistics and machine learning. To get started, we need to find our way to my code. So you can navigate to gist.github.com slash John Crone. And there you will find various gists that I published. The one that we're looking for here is called Central Limit Theorem. And so you can scroll through and see which other ones are here. Central Limit Theorem is one of them. We click on it, and that brings us through to the whole code demo. Now, what we're going to do to make this execute interactively very easily, we'll click on this Open in Colab button. So this opens the notebook of code inside the Google Colab interface, which as long as you have a Google login, which is free to get, by the way, you then get access to your own beefy cloud compute resources that allow you to execute this code notebook alongside me. And then you can play around with anything you'd like. You can change any of the code. You can experiment to your heart's desire. So the first thing that we're going to do in here, we'll go to the edit drop down menu and we're going to clear all outputs. This gives us a, uh, a clean slate to work with here inside the notebook. We don't have any of the uh, executed cells now visible. So these Colab uh, notebooks, like any other Jupyter notebooks, they mix together uh, text as well as code cells. And so this text here is just for convenience's sake. And so at the top of our notebook on the central limit theorem, we have a few dependencies we're loading in. So the NumPy, Seaborn, and statistics libraries, you can just click play to execute those. You can trust this notebook that I authored and click run anyway. And as we're executing in here, you can either be clicking the play button or you can uh, use shift return to execute the cell. If you wanna add more cells, um, you can add a code cell by clicking the code thing here. So hovering over on a gap between cells, you can click on say code and then you can add in more code or you can do the same thing to add in a text cell. Um, so you can play around with that as you like. Anyway, onto the demo. So we're going to start by simulating a normally distributed population. So to do that, we're going to use the NumPy random normal method here. Uh, by default, this is going to create the standard normal distribution, which I'll show you in a second. The key thing that we need to decide here on is how many points are we going to have in our population? So you can make this any uh, number, ideally any large number. I'm picking 10,000, but you could pick 100,000 or a million. And so I simulate, I create a NumPy array here with uh, 10,000 values, and let's look at the distribution of those values. So we're using the Seaborn dist plot method here to plot the distribution. And so this bell-shaped curve here, this is the normal distribution or the Gaussian distribution. And this one here is the standard normal distribution, as I mentioned earlier. So by default, this random normal fu uh, function automatically samples from the standard normal distribution, which is a normally distributed distribution with a mean of zero and what's called a standard deviation of one, which, which is a, a measure of how, um, how wide the values tend to be away from our mean of zero. So um, by default, this dist plot method also provides us with a, um, a kernel density estimate, this blue curve around the distribution. And so you can optionally turn that off if you find it confusing to see that. Um, so the this same curve here plotted without that uh, kernel uh, density plot, you can see it, these are just the, this is just a count of the values in our simulated 10,000 point normally distributed population. All right, so this is our starting point. Now, what we're going to do to get at the heart of the central limit theorem is we're going to sample from our normal uh, distribution. So uh, remember, we called this uh, NumPy array x, so we're gonna keep working with that now. 
So we're going to sample random values from the population. So we have a population of 10,000, and I'm going to sample here 10 uh, values. You can pick any other kind of smallish number if you want to. And I have this replace argument set to false. This means that um, we're sampling without replacement. So um, we're grabbing 10 values out of the 10,000, and that leaves kind of in the pot to be sampled later, uh, 9,990. It means that uh, if you were to set replace equal to true, then you could in theory keep resampling the same values out of your population. And, and we don't want to do that. Um, uh, you, you, you tend to do it without replacement. So let's grab a sample of 10 random points from amongst our 10,000 and see what they look like. Okay, these are the values. And then the key thing that we're going to be doing throughout this tutorial is calculating the mean of the samples. So here I'm using the mean method from the stats library. And so you can see here, my uh, sample population in my run of it, and every time you run this, you're gonna get different values uh, because both the exact distribution as well as the values we're sampling from it are going to be different every single time we run this. But this time I happen to get a, a mean of 0.25. Now that's actually a fair bit away from our true population mean of zero. So bear that in mind. Um, of course, the larger of a, a sample we, we grab, the more likely we're going to have a mean that is near the true uh, uh, population mean of zero. And so bear that in mind, we'll see that come again later. In order to uh, make this demo work as efficiently as possible, there's a particular calculation that we are going to repeat over and over. And so I put it into a function. So I've created a function here called sample mean calculator. It takes in some NumPy array that contains all of the data points in our population. So for example, we'll be passing in X, the normally distributed, normally distributed population that we already created into here momentarily. And then there's two other arguments that we pass in, which is how big of a sample size would we like to collect? So here we had a sample size of 10. Um, this allows you to vary that number. And then also how many samples overall are we going to, to collect? And I'll explain why we're doing that momentarily. Um, here we just collected one sample, but for the purposes of understanding the central limit theorem, we're going to need to calculate many samples. So within the function, we start off with an empty list. I'm calling it sample means. And then we have a loop that iterates over however many samples we're going to take. And then what we do is we sample, just like we did up here, we use the random choice method to sample without replacement a sample of the particular size that we, that we would like to and that we specified. And so that gives us our sample. And then just like we did here, we're going to calculate the mean. So I use the stat mean method to calculate the sample mean. And I append that sample mean onto my list of sample means here. So this then iterates over how many samples we're going to uh, collect, which is dictated by this n samples uh, variable here. And having done that, we then have a list of however many samples um, we decided to collect, and we return that list. So um, let's, let's run an example here. So let's grab, let's use our normally distributed population X, and then we'll grab uh, 10 samples of size 10 each. So we run that, and then I create a plot of that distribution. And you can see with a relatively small number of samples, and with each of those samples being quite small, so just 10 samples and only um, 10 values within each of those samples, we, we can still see that the, the sample means tend to be near our population mean of zero, and they're kind of distributed around that. So one of the key things here towards understanding the central limit theorem is that the more samples we take, the more likely that the sampling distribution of the means will be normally distributed. So here, let's crank up um, the number of samples that we're taking. So now let's take a thousand samples 
instead of just 10. We'll leave the sample size at 10, but we're now getting 1,000 of them. So now when we do the same uh, calculation and create this plot, now we can see, ah, this is a nice normal distribution around our mean of zero. Perfect. So this is now a what's called a sampling distribution of the means of our original population. And maybe it's unsurprising to us that it's normally distributed, given that the population that we were sampling from is normally distributed. And we can see as we uh, make our samples larger, the tighter the sample means will tend to be around the population mean. So now here I'm ramping up not only the number of samples that I'm taking up to 1,000, but each sample has 1,000 values in it now instead of just 10 values like we had before. So when we had 10 values in there, our, our variance of our sampling distribution is wider than when we have more uh, data points per sample. So this makes perfect sense. So if you take 1,000 data points from our population, and we say, what's the average of those points? Of course, if you have more of them, you're going to tend to be much closer to the true population mean of zero than if you have fewer uh, data points. And so we end up having a similarly shaped distribution. We still have a normal distribution, but now the variance, you can see the values are much smaller on this latest distribution. Um, so our, our samples are much tighter. The sample means are much tighter around the population mean value. All right, so this is, this is a big part of the central limit theorem that we've covered already. This idea that our uh, sampling distribution of means um, tends to be normally distributed around the true population mean. But the central limit theorem goes further because it applies not only to normal distributions, but to other population distributions as well. So now, instead of having a random uh, distribution that's perfectly normally distributed, let's use the skewNorm um, library, specifically this RVS method from SciPy, to simulate a skewed population. So let's see what this population looks like. So I'm passing in a, a skewness parameter here, and I still have 10,000 points in my population. But now we can see that this distribution is not normally distributed. Specifically, this is a highly skewed distribution, maybe similar to something like uh, the distribution you would get if you looked at salaries across a large population. So, you know, there tend to be a small number of very high salaries. The majority of them are, are close to zero. So now, when we use our sample mean calculator to grab samples, calculate the mean of them, and look at the distribution, wow, look at this. As the central limit theorem would state, we end up with a normal distribution. So despite the population distribution being skewed, when we create, when we sample means from that distribution, we tend to be uh, centered around the mean. So um, this distribution has a mean of 0.8, the population distribution, and so our sample mean distribution also has a mean of 0.8, but the values are normally distributed around it. And you can think of this symmetry as being a result of saying, okay, if I were to grab you know, 10 values from my skewed distribution, where would I expect them to be? Well, I'd expect them to be near the average. But then there, it's equally likely that due to random variation, those means are going to end up a little bit above or a little bit below the true population mean, and that symmetry is what causes this normal distribution to happen. And of course, same thing as before, if we increase our sample sizes from 10 up to 1,000, then our sample distribution will end up being tighter around the population mean of 0.8. Cool, so now we've seen that, thanks to the central limit theorem, we have uh, skewed distributions turn out to be normal when we sample means from them. So does it work with other kinds of distributions as well? Absolutely, it works with uh, multimodal distributions. So here I'm using the NumPy concatenate method to create a bimodal distribution with a mean of two. And when I use the sample mean calculator, 
that we developed to sample means from it. Lo and behold, yet again, we end up with a normal distribution centered around the population mean of two. So this will work, and this is the key thing about the central limit theorem, is that regardless what our population distribution is, when we sample means from that distribution, it will always produce a normal distribution. And so as one final um, testament to that, here I'm creating a uniform distribution. And so all of the values are just uniformly across this range zero to one. So there's a mean of 0.5 in here. When we create a, uh, a sample mean distribution from this uniform distribution, we still end up with a normal distribution around that mean of 0.5. So this is the central limit theorem and uh, it's really powerful. As my hands-on code demo illustrated, with large enough sample sizes, we can assume the sampling distribution of the means will be normally distributed, allowing us to run statistical tests that are configured for normal distributions. This is critical because all of the most popular statistical tests are configured around the normal distribution. As an example of such a test, the t-test allows us to infer whether two samples come from different populations, say an experimental group and a control group. Thanks to the central limit theorem, we can use this test even if we have no idea what the underlying distribution of the population is, which is pretty much all the time. Well, that's it for today. I'd love it if you can stay in touch to provide me with feedback on this tutorial and to let me know what topics of data science you'd like me to be providing content on in the future. By staying in touch, you'll also be the first to know whenever I release new free content, including interactive tutorials like today's and my A4N podcast, the Artificial Neural Network News Network, which covers technical aspects and social implications of AI advances. So head to johncrone.com to sign up for my email newsletter, follow me on Twitter via my handle johncronelearns, and feel free to add me on LinkedIn, but be sure to mention that you know me from this video tutorial so that I accept your request. Finally, if you'd like to purchase Deep Learning Illustrated, my number one best-selling book on the theory and practice of modern AI systems, feel free to head to bit.ly slash I capital T crone and use the code crone during checkout to get 35% off.